Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and this is my John Deere 2038R. I love this machine. It's been a great machine. I've done three different review videos on it talking about, you know, how much I like it. But I'm hard on this machine. I'm usually hard on all my equipment, if we're being honest. I buy it to use it, and I use it to the limit of its capabilities most of the time. So... All my previous videos have mainly been positive, talking about the things I like about it, but today I'm compiling all the things that have messed up on this tractor, all the problems I've had, and I'm going to share all those with you today. And the point of all of this, the positive reviews that I've given, which I still believe in, and the somewhat negative review today of these problems, the purpose is to inform the consumer who's considering a purchase. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not pro John Deere. It's not anti John Deere. Just my experience. I've had problems with bolts coming loose on my front axle and on my loader mass. Now I could just tell you about each of these problems, but since I have the video footage recorded, I thought it'd be more interesting to actually show you the issue. We'll start with those broken bolts when I think I had between 100 and 200 hours on the tractor. I just looked down and I saw this bolt right here hanging halfway out and basically it, it wasn't threaded in at all anymore but it was still hanging in the hole and this one is broken off. This one is loose enough you can move the nut. I don't think I'm going to fix this myself even though I could. I think I'm going to have the dealership do it. It's a new machine, less than a year old. Um, I just feel like I should have them fix it and make sure it's right. The dealership fixed all of the bolts in my loader mast and I haven't had another problem there. But that taught me to really keep a close eye on it and that's how I found this issue. I found loose bolts in my axle, my front axle. And I actually, this was about a week ago, but I haven't actually installed those yet because they weren't in stock. I could have got them overnighted, but I didn't want to pay the extra $20 to overnight $12 worth of bolts. These front axle bolts, the loader mount bolts, and the wheel bolts are in the owner's manual as something you should be checking on your tractor. But the interval on those is like 200 hours. You're supposed to check it like at 10 hours when you first get the machine. And then the next time you're supposed to check them is at 200 hours. 200 hours is a long time. If one of these bolts comes loose at 100 hours, you can't just run it another 100 hours till you find the problem. That all of these types of bolts that have a potential to work themselves loose should be marked with a paint pen. And that's what I've been doing. One thing right off the top of my head is loose and broken loader bolts. So the little bolt, it's not little. The eyelet that holds up the bucket level indicator at the top broke off. And even before that, I wasn't sure if it was really adjusted properly. So we're gonna replace this and we're gonna adjust the bucket level indicator. You come up the loader, the next thing you've got is these pivot points right here. They've got a bolt on this side. This side, instead of having a nut, has a hook that fits into a slot here. And when you tighten it down with that hook, it can't turn. That's how you tighten your bolt. So you can see on the other side that one of these bolts right here, instead of a bolt, is the eyelet for the bucket level indicator. And that one's broke off. Then I found one of these loose, and this had come out of the slot and rotated. So I've already tightened that one up. Now I'm going to check all the rest. All right, so this is not the one I tightened up the other day. This is completely loose right here. And so I think this one that's already loose, I'm going to pull the pin out and then see how much slop it has in it. Okay, we've got a flat washer and a rubber washer. All right, so taking that out allows me to pivot this up and check the slop in it. I mean, it's got some, but it doesn't seem excessive. These loader bolts kept coming loose, so I took it into the dealership, 
and they replaced all the rubber washers and I believe they used Loctite and now two years and 400 hours later I haven't had any more problems with the loader bolts. I actually bent the front stabilizer arm. I'm terrible with terminology guys. I don't know what, it, what it's really called but there's a bar that goes between your two front wheels. It's adjustable and it, it keeps those two wheels lined up with each other. That got bent. I didn't fix it. It's I bent it back a little bit. I think I've got some footage of that, but it's still bent and I've been using it that way for a while. As you look under the axle right there, you'll see the steering shaft I'm talking about with a tie rod on each end. And from this point of view, it doesn't look bent at all. And even when I take the camera around to the other side, it doesn't look bent very bad. But before I got the cameras out, I put a straight edge on that and it is bent severely. It's not up and down. All the way up and down. Yep, and then down. Okay, stop right there. The actuator that controls the height of the mower deck has failed twice. It wasn't working when they delivered the tractor, and then it failed again, maybe a year later, and both times were fixed under warranty. But I've heard that's an expensive part if it fails a third time. I currently have a broken discharge shoot on my mower. Seems like I tear those up on everything, though. I can't remember hitting anything on it. I did have a larger repair that I had to make on the mower deck. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys could see that, but when I turn this shaft right here, which is the PTO shaft on this gearbox, this pulley's not turning. I can see the shaft turning, so the gearbox is not torn up, it appears. I'm guessing there's a key that's supposed to go in there and it's come out, but also it looks like the pulley has dropped down, and I don't know what holds that on. I think I'll probably have to take this bracket right here off to access underneath it. We've got a broken bolt here. The bolt that I needed, they had it in stock there at Heritage Tractor. Seems like they have everything in stock. $2.16, so could have been a lot worse. This is the top piece on the little pedal you push to engage your four-wheel drive. And that broke today. So I don't know how hard it's going to be to pull up on that without that piece or how hard this will be to replace. Really just haven't looked yet. There is a guard that goes over the front wheel drive shaft. And that guard broke off. I'm going to say that's from abuse. It hit something. But it's a plastic piece and the bolt holes ripped out on it. I actually haven't fixed that yet. I put on some aftermarket stabilizers because I didn't like the factory ones and those actually failed, but probably shouldn't even mention that because that's not a stock John Deere part. So I come over here to move the tractor just out of the way so I can park in here. And when I go to start it, as soon as the engine cranks, I get a red stop sign on the dash, a loud beeping noise, and the display says, intake manifold pressure sensor fault or something like that researching this problem i found out that you're not supposed to start your tractor at an idle you're supposed to start it at half throttle and i started doing that and i've never had this problem again but I have a feeling it's going to rear its head at some point. Okay, I have sprung a hydraulic leak of some kind. And the fluid's coming from all the way up here. I don't know 
I don't know really what that means. We got a little bit of a fluid leak right here, but not a lot. But there's some kind of a valve under here, and there's hard lines coming off those valves. And one of those hard lines, you've got your fitting here, it comes down and it bends, and it's just a hard line right underneath this piece of plastic had a blowout. It was like a crack, and oil was shooting out of that hard line. And that hard line was bent in all kinds of unusual shapes and went all the way back to the back of the tractor. So it wasn't something I could just go grab another one. It's $310. That seemed like a fair number to you for that hard line? I have no idea what uh, like a standard price would be. But I figure that's probably $100 for a line and $200 of shop time. I don't know. The tractor has now died three times in a row, and I don't know what's going on with it. I've got a couple of ideas, maybe, that I'll run by you guys. There's no warning lights or error lights or anything on the dash, but I'm not looking at the dash before it dies, so maybe it's saying something in that case. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. Any of you guys that have been following along know I've had an issue with my tractor just randomly dying although it's not that random because it seems to be when it's been running a while and i'm not in the seat and i'm operating the backhoe whenever the backhoe moves the tractor it shifts it will kill the tractor and i think it's been a matter of the neutral safety switch losing connection so i've got a replacement neutral safety switch but in the meantime i'm doing a diagnostic right now to eliminate some possible causes of the issue That little bit of movement right there is all we have, so that doesn't seem excessive. Right below that is the neutral safety switch. And it seems like this plug right here, seems like the, the plug itself may be a little bit damaged. Here's, here's the plug, and the retaining clip wasn't very firmly seated on the plug. I'm gonna see if I can get that pulled out. I definitely won't be able to get a camera angle on removing that. Now, as I look at this, the odds that this is bad, and all it does is push that little ball down, the odds of that being bad, I would say are pretty low. This isn't cracked or there's nothing in it. So, much more likely in my mind that the, the connector is bad, not the switch. So, we may still have the same problem after swapping that out. It would appear that the neutral safety switch was bad. So I'm really glad that this is not a major problem. It's not gonna be expensive or cause me a lot of downtime. Now this problem I really caused myself while doing some other maintenance. All I had left to do was hook the power wires up to the terminals on the battery. So as I was finishing tightening up the second terminal and just about done with the project, my wrench slipped off and the end of it hit the hydraulic cooling unit. And I mean, I just barely hit it with the wrench. Didn't think anything of it. So the only connection points on this are the hydraulic in, the hydraulic out, and these four tabs. Primarily, I should just have to remove the bolts out of these and disconnect the hydraulic lines at the bottom, but we'll see. This one definitely is not the tractor's fault, but I thought it was an interesting repair, so I thought I'd throw it in here too. But I just had something like a, uh, a four-prong garden rake stab into my tire, and it's a loaded tire, and I'm leaking fluid out. So let's take a look at the tire. I feel kind of fortunate because not too far from here, there's a service station that just does tractor and diesel tires, and they're going to send a truck out, a service truck, to where I'm at, which is in the middle of nowhere, really, and they're gonna fix this on spot, and they can even fill it with fluid again on the spot. So.
Damn. Yeah. There is a full-length video showing this whole process that I thought was really interesting. And that's actually true of everything I'm showing in this video. I have a full video on each problem. So if you're interested in more information on any of this, check the description of the video. I don't know if that's a lot of problems or there's probably guys out there who've never had to touch their machines. It's not me. So I'm still happy with it, though. I mean... I feel like this is just normal wear and tear from 700 hours. Let me know what you think. Is this a normal amount of problems to have, or is this excessive?